welcome back and we are going to continue from the topic basic practices of crop production so let's start so till now we have seen what is a crop and what are the different types of crops now we are going to see that how do we grow a crop so cultivation of crops involves several activities undertaken by farmers over a period of time you may find that these activities are similar to those carried out by a gardener or even by you when you grow ornamental plants in your house these activities or tasks are referred to as agricultural practices which are listed below so for going for so for growing a crop there are some agricultural practices so that we can grow a crop so the first is preparation of soil second is sowing adding manure and fertilizers irrigation protecting from weeds harvesting and then storage so first is preparation of soil so what do we mean by preparation of soil we just can't grow any kind of crop on any kind of field the field need to be loose in if the field is very tight enough then there will be no space for aeration and water to go through it like if this is a soil and uh, if we and if the soil is very tight and if we have want to grow a crop on this we just can't grow the crop because this ta- uh, the soil is very tight and there will not be any space for aeration for the roots and even the waters to penetrate so that is why we have to loosen the soil so the process of loosening and turning of the soil is called tilling or plowing so the process of loosening of the soil the process in which we loosen the soils to make to uh, make it so that the air can easily go through it and even the waters can easily penetrate through it so this process is called tilling or plowing so this can be done using a plow or even a hoe and a modern technique which is called as a cultivator so first of all let us look at plow so th- this has been used since ancient times for tilling the soil adding fertilizers to the crop removing the weeds and turning the soil plow is not only used for tilling the soil but also to add fertilizers to the crop and even to remove weeds so plow is a traditional tool it was used in ancient times and nowadays we use modern techniques such as cultivators but in the case of plow let us study that what is a plow and how does it look like so here it is a diagram of a plow so the main part of a plow is a plow shaft a plow shaft is the main part of a plow why is it the main pl- part of the plow it is because it connects the beam to the plow share so the plow share it is dug into the ground and the beam is just kept on to the bulls so for this we require some animals such as bulls sometimes even horses and even camels so for plowing uh, the main part of a plow is a plow shaft and uh, the plow share it is dug into the ground and the beam is kept onto the neck of the bulls or the animals which are used to plow the field so the main part is the plow shaft next is we have a hoe so hoe is a simple tool which is used for removing weeds and for loosening the soil so who is used to remove weeds and also to loosen the soil it has a long rod of wood or iron and a strong broad and bent blade of iron is fixed to one of its ends and works like a blade it pulled by it is pulled by animals so this is a diagram of a hoe so basically in a hoe it is of it is of a rod so this is the rod you can see and the rod is made up of iron or wood and it is pulled by animals and there is one bent plate as you can see here and the bent plate acts like a blade into the ground and uh, it just loosen the soil but these two techniques such as the plow and the hoe are not very useful for to farmers because it would take a lot more time to plow the field just by two bulls or just by a hoe so that is why we use some modern techniques such as a culti- cultivator so nowadays plowing is done by tractor driven cultivator the use of cultivator saves labor and time 
so cultivator is a modern technique to plow the field and it is a tractor driven cultivator because it is done through a tractor and the farmer used to ride the tractor and it is driven so that is what is known as tractor driven cultivator and the use of cultivator saves both labor and time because if you use a plow for a large field then it would take a lot more time as compared to cultivator so it saves both labor and time so now we have seen that how do we prepare a soil and the different methods to prepare a soil such as plowing then we have a hoe then a cultivator then the next agricultural practice is sowing so now the soil is even prepared so now we have to sow the seeds but the seeds are of two qualities bad quality seeds and good quality seeds so we have to differentiate between them and it is not tough so let us look at how do we differentiate between a good quality seed and a bad quality seed so there is one activity for this we have to take a beaker so suppose this is a beaker and we have to fill it with water after filling it with water we have to put some seeds inside it after some time you will be able to see that some seeds are floating on the water and some seeds are there in the bottom so the seeds which are there in the bottom so you might be having a question that why some of the seeds are there in the bottom and why some seeds are floating so some seeds are floating because they are hollow from inside so if they are hollow from inside they will be light in weight and that is why they are floating in the water but in the case of the seeds which are there at the bottom they are not hollow from inside and they are heavy in weight so that is why they are at the bottom and the seeds which are floating are hollow from inside and that is why they are at the uh, this, so that is why they are floating so for sowing the seeds we use some traditional tools so there is one traditional tool in which we have a pipe and the pipe is connected with a funnel shaped and the funnel thing is just placed into the ground but it is not like that we just have to sow the seeds the seed the seeds should be at equal distance and at equal depth like if this is a soil and if i grow a plant here and if i just randomly grow another plant just next to it without having any proper distance so then the plant which is consider this as plant a and this is plant b so the plant a will not allow plant b to get the sunlight or any nutrition things so that is why the plant should be at equal distance so that they can get equal amount of sunlight equal amount of water etc so using traditional tool it is quite difficult to pour the seeds at equal distance and also at equal depth so that is why we use modern techniques such as seed drill so nowadays the seed drill is used for sowing with the help of tractors even the cultivator is also done by tractors like in the case of preparation of soil even seed drill is done by a tractor this sows the seeds uniformly at equal distance and depth it ensures that seeds get covered by the soil after sowing this protects seeds from being eaten by birds sowing by sowing by using a seed drill saves time and labor so if the soil is just sown then we also need to cover it because if we don't cover the soil on the uh, if we don't cover the soil on the seeds then the bird will just eat off all the seeds so that is why we have to cover the seeds with a layer of soil and this can be also done through a seed drill and the seed driller saves both labor and time just like a cultivator now the next we have adding manure and fertilizers now we have prepared the soil and even we have sown the seeds at equal distance and also at equal depth and we have also covered the soil with a, uh, we have also covered the seeds with a layer of soil now next is about adding manure and fertilizers 
the substance which are added to the soil in the form of nutrients for the healthy growth of plants are called manure and fertilizers so manure and fertilizers are the two things which are used to increase the nutrition content which is there in the soil so if this is the soil there need to be extra amount of nutrition like humus what is humus humus is a rotting dead matter which is present on the soil so that is and the humus increases the soil fertility and if the soil is more fertile then the plant will be healthy and if the soil is not fertile the plant will not be a healthy plant so that is why we have to ensure that the, plant, the that the soil is a uh, contains humus and it is fertile and that is why we use manure and fertilizers so soil supplies mineral nutrients to the crop plants these nutrients are essential for the growth of plants in certain areas farmers grow crop after crop in the same field so basically the soil supplies mineral to the crop plants so the soil need to be fertile enough so that it can give nutrition things to the plants and the plants can be a healthy plant so first is about manure so manure is an organic substance obtained from the decomposition of plant or animal wastes farmers dump plant and animal waste in pits at open places and allow it to decompose the decomposition is caused by some microorganisms and we will learn about the microorganisms in the next chapter which is microorganisms friend and foe so basically manure is an organic substance and it is obtained from the decomposition of plant or animal wastes so if we have a plant or any animal, animal waste then the soil used to decompose it and the decomposition is done by microorganisms then the farmers dump plant and animal waste in pits at open places and allow it to decompose and if it decomposes then they just used to spray it on the soil so that the soil can be fertile and manure is an organic substance now in the case of fertilizers the fertilizers are not organic substance they are chemicals which are used in a particular nutrition fertilizers are produced in factories some examples of fertilizers are urea ammonium sulfate superphosphate potash npk which is nitrogen phosphorus and potassium so urea ammonium sulfate all these things are the examples of fertilizers and fertilizers are chemical substances which are rich in particular nutrition whereas in the case of manure they are organic substances and which are made from the decomposition of plants and animal waste the use of fertilizers has helped farmers to get better yield of crops such as wheat paddy and maize but excessive use of fertilizers had made the soil less fertile because fertilizers have more amount of chemicals and if you use them in an excessive amount then it may be harmful for the soil fertilizers have also become a source of water pollution therefore in order to maintain the soil fertility of the soil we have to substitute fertilizers with organic manure or leave the field uncultivated or fallow in between two crops so fallow means uncultivated okay so instead of using excessive amount of fertilizers we can use manures the use of manure improves soil texture as well as its water retaining capacity it replenishes the soil with nutrients another method of replenishing the soil with nutrients is through crop rotation now here is a difference between fertilizer and manure so fertilizer is a man made inorganic salt so it is a chemical substance which is not made by humans whereas in the case of manure it is a natural substance obtained by the decomposition of cattle dung and plant residues fertilizers is uh, fertilizers are prepared in factories 
whereas the man a uh, manure can be prepared in the fields like we saw that the manures can be prepared with the help of the decomposition of plants and animal wastes so they can be prepared in the field but in the case of fertilizers it is prepared in the factories now fertilizers do not provide any humus to the soil but manure provides a lot of humus to the soil as i told you before humus means the rotting dead matter which is present on the soil and the humus makes the soil uh, soil fertile now the fourth difference is fertilizers are very rich in plant nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus and potassium all these things are examples of fertilizers and they are called n p k sorry n stands for nitrogen p stands for phosphorus and k stands for potassium so n p k means nitrogen phosphorus and potassium now manure is relatively less rich in plant nutrients because it is obvious that fertilizers are made of chemicals and manure are not just made of chemicals so fertilizers will have more qualities as compared to manure but if you use excessive amount of fertilizers then it would be harmful now here are some advantages of manure the er the organic manure is considered better than fertilizer this is because now here are some reasons why manure is considered better than fertilizers so let us look at into it it enhances the water holding capacity of the soil it makes the soil porous due to which exchange of gases become easy it increases the number of friendly microbes it improves the texture of soil so these are some of the reasons why manure is considered better than fertilizers and it is obvious that if the fertilizers are made from chemicals in some or the other way they are harmful for the plants because not all the chemicals are suitable for everything excessive amount of anything will just destroy it so excessive amount of fertilizers will not be good for plants too now the next is about irrigation we have looked into the point like preparation of soil sowing adding manure and fertilizers now the next is irrigation all living beings need water to live water is important for proper growth and development water is absorbed by the plant roots along with water minerals and fertilizers are also absorbed plant contain nearly 90% water so this is important plant contains 90% of water water is essential because germination of seeds does not take place under dry conditions nutrients dissolved in water are transported to each part of the plant water also protects the crop from both frost and hot air currents so basically the supply of water to crops at equal intervals is called irrigation even the plant needs water like we human we human needs water to survive same as the plants the plants even need water to survive so the supply of water to crops at regular intervals is called irrigation the method in which we supply water to plants this method is known as irrigation the time and frequency of irrigation varies from crop to crop soil to soil and season to season according to the season we supply water to the crops like if it is a rainy season we just can't give a lot of water to the plants because it is already getting water from the rain so that is why it differs from soil to soil climate season to season etc now the sources of irrigation the sources of water for irrigation are the wells tube wells ponds lakes rivers dams and canals 
and these are some traditional methods of irrigation like moat chain pump dekhli and rahat so these are some traditional methods of irrigating the field now here are some modern methods of irrigation one is sprinkler system the other is drip system so the uh, sprinkler system is more useful on the uneven land where sufficient water is not available the perpendicular pipes having rotating nozzles on top are joined to the main pipeline at regular intervals when water is allowed to flow through the main pipe under pressure with the help of a pump it escapes from the rotating nozzles now in this line they are just telling that how does the sprinkler system works so it gets sprinkled on the crop as if it is raining sprinkler is very useful for lawns coffee plantation and several other crops next is the drip system in this system the for the water falls direct falls drop by drop directly near the roots so if this is a soil then if we use a sprinkler system the sprinkler system is just sending the water and it is just not just looking at that whether the water is directly going to the plants and in sprinkler system most of the water is just wasted that is why we consider drip system as the best system for irrigation because in drip system the water is directly falling onto the roots of the plants okay so it is called drip system it is the best technique for watering fruit plants gardens and trees water is not wasted at all it is a boon in regions where availability of water is poor like if the water availability is poor in some regions and in that case if we use a sprinkler system then the half of the water is just wasted like that so that is why we use drip system so that very very less amount of water is wasted now the next is protection from weeds now we have also watered the crops now we have to protect the plants from weeds okay so first of all what are weeds the undesirable plants are called weeds like if you are growing a crop on a certain field and if some of the other plants which are grown then they are called as undesirable plants because we don't just want them on our field but they are just growing by their own and they are called as weeds and we just don't want them if there is a weed crop in a field and then suddenly some other plant is growing on that field and we just don't want it so that is called as a weed the removal of weeds is called weeding weeding is necessary since weeds compete with the crop plants for water nutrients space and light if consider this is a soil and here is a crop then suddenly an undesirable plant which is called as a weed is grown here then most of the nutrients is taken by these weeds most of the sunlight is taken by these weeds and this plant is not getting any water any sunlight and all the nutrients are taken by the weeds so that is why we have to cut out the weeds some weeds interfere even in harvesting and may be poisonous for animals and human beings farmers adopt many ways to remove weeds and control their growth tilling before sowing of crops helped in uprooting and killing of weeds which may then dry up and get mixed with the soil now we are going to just look at the examples of weeds so first of all before going to that weeds are also controlled by using certain chemicals okay so they are stopped by using certain chemicals called weed sites weed sites are some chemicals and the examples of weed sites are 2 4d as it is written here so the weed sites are a chemicals which are used to stop the growth of weeds and there are some traditional methods also such as khurpi 
खुरपी इज ऑल्सो यूज टू स्टॉप द ग्रोथ ऑफ वीड्स नाउ दे डू नॉट डैमेज द क्रॉप्स द वीडी साइड्स डू नॉट डैमेज द क्रॉप्स द वीडी साइड्स आर डिल्यूटेड विद वॉटर टू एक्सटेंड रिक्वायर्ड एंड स्प्रेड इन द फील्ड्स विद स्प्रेयर As already mentioned, the weed seeds are sprayed during the vegetative growth of weeds before flowering and seed formation. Spraying of weed seeds may affect the health of farmers because they are made from chemicals, and if any drop of them just touches the skin of the farmers, then it will just damage it. So they should be used. So they should use these chemicals very carefully. they should cover their nose and mouth with a piece of cloth during spraying of these chemicals because they are poisonous and they will just harm if they just fall if a drop of it even falls on a farmer's skin now the next is harvesting harvesting of a crop is an important task the cutting of crop after it is mature is called harvesting in harvesting crops are pulled out or cut close to the ground it usually takes 3 to 4 months for a cereal crop to mature so the cutting of crop after it is mature after the crop has if if the crop has all the nutrition after it has grown up if after it has been mature then we have to cut out the crop and this process is called harvesting and in harvesting crops are pulled out or cut close to the ground Harvesting in our country is either done manually by sickle or by a machine called harvester. So we either use a sickle or a machine called harvester which is used for harvesting. In the harvested crops the grain seeds need to be separated from the chaff. This process is called threshing. This is carried out with the help of a machine called combine. so threshing is done with the help of a machine called th- combine which is in fact a harvester as well as a thresher so the process in which the seeds is separated from the chaff it is called as threshing there is one more method which is called as winnowing farmers with small holding of land do the separation of grain and chaff by winnowing and we have already studied these in class 6th about winnowing and threshing now next is about storage storage of produce is an important task if the harvested grains are to be kept for a longer time they should be safe from moisture insects rats and microorganisms now if the crops are just harvested now we have to store them and for this we have to take out all the moisture because if the moisture is there in the crops then the crops will start to rot so that is why we have to take out the moisture harvested grains have more moisture if freshly harvested grains are stored without drying they may get spoiled or attacked by organisms making them unfit for use or for germination hence before storing them the grains are properly dried in the sun to reduce the moisture in them so for reducing the moisture we have to keep the crop in a proper sunlight and if the moisture is there in the crop then the crops will start to rot and we will not be able to use the crops this prevents the attack by insect pests bacteria and fungi now farmers store grains in jute bags or metallic bins however large scale storage of grain is done in silos and granaries to protect them from pests like rats and insects dried neem leaves are used for storing food grains at homes for storing large quantities of grains in big go downs specific chemical treatments are required to protect them for from pests and microorganisms so basically storage of crops can be done in silos or granaries now here is a here is an image of silos and this is a granary 
now the last topic of this is animal husbandry so when the animals are reared at home or in farms they we have to provide them with proper food or shelter so that they can give healthy nutrition to us in back like if there is a cow we have to take care of the cow we have to give it nutrition food so that it can give us healthy milk so this process is called animal husbandry so animal husbandry so animal means the animals and husbandry means when we take care of these animals and if we want something from them back again so this is known as animal husbandry when we take care of the animals to get them to get something from them so this is known as animal husbandry now here are some key words agricultural practices animal husbandry crop fertilizer granaries harvesting irrigation kharif manure plow rabi seed silo sowing storage threshing weeds pesticide and winnowing now let's look at what we have learned till now in order to provide food to our growing population we need to adopt certain agricultural practices same kind of plants cultivated at a place constitute a crop in india crops can be broadly categorized into two types based on seasons rabi and kharif crops it is necessary to prepare soil by tilling and leveling plows and levelers are used for these purpose sowing of seeds at appropriate depths and distances gives good yield good variety of seeds are sown after selection of healthy seeds sowing is done by seed drills soil needs replenishment and enrichment through the use of organic manure and fertilizers use of chemical fertilizers has increased tremendously with the introduction of new crop varieties supply of water to crops at appropriate intervals is called irrigation now the next is about weeds weeding involves removal of unwanted and uncultivated plants called weeds harvesting is the cutting of the mature crop manually or by machines separation of the grains from the chaff is called threshing and if the separation of the grain from the chaff is done on a lower scale then it is known as winnowing the proper storage of grains is necessary to protect them from pests and microorganisms food is also obtained from animals for which animals are reared this is called animal husbandry and animal husbandry was the last topic of this video lecture hope you like it thank you for watching